Peace to my gods, peace to my herbs, peace to all my righteous people throughout the planet. I know you knowledge this wisdom so you understand it. Now, before I go into this build, y'all, about the master key to the master's mansion, I'm going to just talk about some, some things that's going on, you know, recently, some current events. Because we always got to start out with current events, make sure we're on the same page, you know. Because in current events nowadays, uh, there's a lot of misinformation or people who just have a little piece of the story, one story, okay. But when an event happened, you know, when you go to court, it's a whole lot of people testifying. It's a whole lot of different sides to it, you know. If I'm going to take what a person is saying, right, based on an event, I have to know this person is uh, sound in character and a very thorough researcher, right? Because we know through the eye of understanding things might present themselves different from how they really are, okay? And the fool, he goes on what he perceives to see, right, with his physical eyes, not what he sees with, his, with the eye of the mind. You don't want to be that fool. So, one, you know, if you've been watching me for a while, I've been talking about uh, the Horn of Africa right here. Right? Particularly Eritrea, Ethiopia, and uh, I guess I, we could say Egypt and Sudan. They're, you know, kind of dealing with a situation. And the situation was that there was a group out of the region called Tigray, which is where Aksum is, you know, and the churches of Lalibela is. So for about the last, I'm going to say, 30 years since Meles Zenawe took power from uh, Mengistu's crew, okay? Meles Zenawe was the head of the TPLF, the Tigray People's Liberation Front, okay? But after he took power, these a lot of the insurgents, not all the Tigray people, but a lot of the insurgents who were co-opted by other groups, they began terrorizing this whole region. And other regions, not just the Tigray region, but also the Amhara region. Also, uh, just a lot of the surrounding uh, provinces were terrorized because since they had, they were in power. Meli Zanawe gave them the arms, the guns, so they could go and do whatever they wanted to to whomever. And since Meli Zanawe had certain deals with the Western powers, they weren't going to say anything. Okay. Uh, the guy Tedros, who's the head of the World Health Organization, got so many human rights violations against him for people he murdered and mutilated, cut off private parts of people in the Horn of Africa, and they've been silencing this. It actually went to the International Criminal Court, but they said since Ethiopia did not sign the, I guess it's the Rome Agreement, agreeing to be a part of the ICC, that they can't extradite him. This is the guy you see who's the head of the World Health Organization. He's killed hundreds or sanctioned the killing of hundreds of maybe hundreds of thousands in East Africa for a long time. So now we're finally seeing that the UN and different people who've been watching this are coming forth to see the facts that have been put on the table by the independent study groups who come out of Eritrea who have been giving us information on this. And we thank them for giving us clarity on this subject. Because you always hear about a war in Africa, but every war has a reason. Wars just don't start. People just don't go to war and kill each other for nothing. There's a reason behind it. But what we see now is that hidden hand. You know, when you see a picture, like the picture of George Washington, he got his hand in his, in his breast pocket like this, in his coat pocket. That represents the hidden hand. Watch for that symbol. Because that hidden hand is slapping the shit out of Africa right now, right? But if you could see that hidden hand coming, you could slip that punch. You heard me? The only way we're going to be able to see these hidden hands is coming at us if we look at history, okay? And we see what happened in the past. So when the punch comes this time, you see it coming. You know how to look in the eye of the person, look, when they're about to throw the punch, how they breathe, right? So you know how to slip it. I'm, I'm speaking metaphorically, y'all. You know, and I have to say, I'm very proud of Africa, particularly East Africa, for standing Somalia, Ethiopia, Eritrea, the Sudan, even the African Union told the UN, hey, we're a 54 country block, the biggest block in the UN. There's no Asian Union. 
There's a European Union, but it ain't as strong as the African Union. The EU is based upon the AU. Yeah, the AU came into existence way before there was any European Union. In fact, there's really no European Union. That's just a nice way of saying, hey, we would like to get together, but they don't want to get together. Okay, but the AU, Sudan, Ethiopia, Eritrea, uh, Somalia, all of the Horn, even Saudi Arabia are saying, no, hands off Africa. We got this. We can handle this. Okay. So current, that's current events, y'all. And I'm going to talk about something else. I'm going to talk about your president, Mr. Biden. You know, he's coming out with a new crime bill after he, you know, said he apologized for the last crime bill. And we said, no, don't go for that apology. The apology don't mean nothing from the devil. I mean, he's trying to get a pass from you to do whatever he do again. And if you give him that pass, he's going to take that pass. And we see what he's doing. He wants more money for police. So it went from defunding the police to more money for the police. Because the police, I guess they lost a lot of money during this last summer of what happened. So I guess this is his way of compensating them, you know. But I have to say, I think I know this and I think you know this. Um, the police goes back to, uh, historically, it goes back to something called the slave patrol. That's who the police you see, the agencies you see originated from the slave patrol, people who caught runaway slaves, sometimes not just runaway slaves. Sometimes these would be free black people. As you saw in, uh, what was it? 13 years of slave. They would kidnap a free man who was never a slave. And then make him a slave. You see? Make him be a slave. Just because of his color. Okay? So, you know, we know this, this, this is something, this crime bill, where they're trying to use the 13th Amendment, which says that if you're caught doing crime, and you have to do some time, then they can make you a slave. So I know we all celebrated Juneteenth, but um, we still got some slaves. They're called prisoners. And it says that in the Constitution, that they can still enslave you if you're a prisoner. Now, we know as soon as they passed that, they began criminalizing the black image. Movies like The, uh, the, uh, the Birth of a Nation and all the other movies that came after that basically criminalized the black man's image, title, and archetype. Until this day. And they continue to make these movies. So I said all of that to say that since we went through the 90s and we made it through that crime bill, it was kind of rough. A lot of us still locked up behind that. But we should be a little wiser today, right? So let me go into today's degree. And I'm going I'm to read it. I know it, but I like to read it, y'all. Because when you look at the picture of W.D. Farad, he was reading. The father, you always found him reading. And ain't nothing wrong with reviewing and renewing your lessons, family. You know, as you get older. That's the only way you're going to keep it. That's what makes the culture free. Keep it free. Says so who is the 85%? Uncivilized people, poison animal eaters. Slaves to a mental death and power. Who do not know of the true and living God or their origin in this world. And they worship what they know not. Easily led in the wrong direction. And hard to lead in the right direction. Mm. That's a mouthful there. And this was back in 1930 when this was said. But it's still true. Because some stuff that you say it's not time dated. It's just a reality. A human reality that uh, uh, renews itself constantly. Right When you think it went away it popped back up. Right? Because we still have the 85%. The 10%. And the 5%. Now, the problem I would say is that we know the 10% is doing their job, right? The best that they can. But they fade now, too, because people are very dissatisfied with what they, the world they have created. The 5% kind of, uh, you know, you know when you go out and build how people respond, huh? You know it's a lot of brothers you call up who say they got knowledge of self that don't want to build for some strange reason. Even though that's what made them who they are. But they don't want to teach nobody else. Now let's go back in time. What if somebody took that same attitude with them? Where would they be? Would they even be here? 
Probably not. I'm not one of those brothers. So once again, I'm talking to you today about the master key. Mm -hmm. And when I say master's key, I could take you to the, uh, it's the culture degree in the one through 36, right? What does it say? Got your lessons out? Let's go. Just so you know, I'm, I'm coming right out of mine. My uncle cannot talk his own language. That's the culture degree. Because culture or language is a part of culture. Correct? Okay, let's go. So, what if you have a culture, but there's a lot of stuff in it that you don't understand? And if that keeps going and it's passed on where people are speaking these words, these concepts, but they don't understand them, that turns into a religion. And instead of it being a day-to-day -day thing you build on and discuss because you understand and you use it to solve the daily problems of life, you just do rituals. Maybe you go somewhere on Sunday, maybe you go somewhere on Friday, maybe you go somewhere on Monday to participate in the ritual and you need to give some money. That's not a person with a master's key. Let me tell you what I mean by the master's key. Say, so they said he does not speak his own, my uncle does not speak his own language. Were they talking about English? Of course not. Arabic? Mm -mm. No. The only real language they speak of in 120 degrees in true tense is mathematics, the language of mathematics. I sincerely love Allah's mathematics. Is that right? Okay. So let's keep going. As we look at uh, the nation of Islam, we see a lot of people in there who don't understand the 120 degrees. They call it the supreme wisdom. Okay. So, you know, it's like they quote some of it. They dance around it. You'll hear one of them throw it in one of their speeches every so often but they don't really have a good understanding or a master's key to the house that we call 120. This is why you could take a God off the street and put him up against the right God off the street, not any, the true and living God off the street and put him up against a minister in the nation and he'll tear his head off and then hand it back to him and tell him to study his lessons. Not in a malicious way though, not in a malicious way, but just in a realistic way. You know, if you've been in this this long, you say you've been studying, right? First of all, it tells you that's the first thing you're supposed to do in 120 is memorize the lessons of Elijah Muhammad. You know, the questions of W.D. Farad, the answers from the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, which he read 103 books to give you. Is that right? Okay. So let me ask you something. Let's say 120 degrees is the house. Or supreme wisdom is the house, okay? And you've been living in this house for like 20, 30 years. And you have a key to a room. One room. But you got a whole mansion. And it got many rooms in it. But you only have one key. That means you're not the owner of that house. You don't have the master's key. You have one key which give you so much access to so much space and so many things in one room. Is that right? And that's where a lot of the people in the nation are. The degree they stayed on for a while was the wisdom degree in the one through 10. Who is the colored man? The Caucasian white man, right? Yakub's graph the devil, the skunk of the planet earth. That's what it's saying in my lessons. You know, I got my lessons from Dr. Khaled. And they would put that degree, the wisdom degree, before the knowledge degree. Mm, they emphasized more on who the devil was rather than who God was. And to me, that created a misunderstanding. But once again, they don't have a master's key. So you say, what's, what's the master's key? Well, I, I think we just talked about that. The master key is spoken of in problem number 13. Right? The 10... Numbers in the mathematic language, the 26 letters in the alphabetic language, which we commonly call today supreme mathematics and supreme alphabet. This is the master key. 
to those 120 lessons, those supreme wisdom lessons that was given to you, that you sit on, that you go by, but you won't go into. And when we look at the 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 uh, how the nation got off track, okay, so they say that the nation got off track in about 75. They had about 80 million, okay? Because Wallace came in, he didn't want to see the people that was thoroughbreds, Wallace and his brothers. They didn't want to see the people that was thoroughbreds, what? Teach and take this to where it was supposed to get to. You understand? They didn't have, when I listened to him teach, I listened to Wallace teach. I even listened to Malcolm teach. I don't think they understood 120 degrees fully. Some aspects of it, but they got caught in one aspect of it and then went on a tangent of study into another direction, right? And never was able to gain the key that opened all the doors in 120 degrees, not only all the doors, but what they say, friendships and all walks of life, luxury, good homes, right? All these things. Some people achieved that. Some people did not. I don't think Malcolm had a good home. I don't think he had a good home. When you read about him and Betty, it didn't sound too good. Even when I read about the stuff the Honorable Elijah Muhammad was going through, it didn't sound too good. And I was in the nation. I didn't see too many good homes. Just keeping it a buck, man. Good people in bad situations, you know. But this is, once again, when you have something, a document of study, and you have not mastered it because you do not have the keys to master it. You're just in it. You can end up anywhere with anybody doing anything for no reason. Right? That sound like somebody you know? Yeah. Got to get that master key. Because the house, I'm talking about 120 degrees, is part of your endowment fund. Right? It's something that has been given to you by birthright, but it's certain things you got to do to earn that what's supposed to be given to you. Because if we give it to you and you're not ready, you're not a master, okay? You're not ready to handle this, you're going to lose it. And it's a family heirloom, okay? We need you to get it, master it, go into all the rooms, right? See what's in there, master all the rooms, the basement, the attic, everything, the outside property around it, everything, right? The best knower of this place, 120 degrees, right? And then pass it on to the next group, right? In a good fashion to where they have the keys, the rules, the tools, and the jewels to be, uh, I would say, the custodian of this and then pass it to the next group, right? The way it was passed to us from Allah, the father was very thorough. He took his time. He did it like a father, not like your big brother, not like your homie, not like your grandfather. He did it like a father, a true father. That's why we called him the father. You know, because he gave us the master keys. He trusted us to take the keys and take them further, faster, because that's what a father do, take the family further. So I would just like to say, I would encourage all of you, look back into your degrees. Look back into your supreme mathematics, your supreme alphabet, and then go into your 120 degrees. 120 degrees is made up of what? Numbers and letters. If you don't understand what the numbers and the letters mean, you'll never understand what the sentences in the book say. Promise you. I read it plenty of times before I got mathematics and supreme alphabet. I was upside down, backwards, sideways, on accident and on purpose. Then I got the keys and I could go into these different rooms and things make sense, you know? You can live a lie for so long. If you look at that word hell, is he is living a lie. And living a lie is when you acting like you know something that you don't really know out of pride. But it's whooping your ass, you know. So that's all I wanted to say, y'all. Just wanted to go into that on the master's key. You got that master's key. If you don't got it, your mathematics, your supreme alphabet, go ahead and get it. Find somebody who got it, who really know it who got a, a thorough understanding of it. Because you can't get the understanding from the paper. You got to get the understanding from seeing you having knowledge of it, knowing it, learning it, then seeing people, other people live it out in the way in which they live it out. You see, that's also the keys.
you know, to put you in power. So I'm going to say peace to the gods. I'm going to say peace to the earths. I love you. And I got more of these coming. In fact, me and the god Inf Mega, we got a real special build coming for you that you're going to like. Okay, it's called the University of Supreme Wisdom. Think about that for a second. The University of Supreme Wisdom. And it's talking about all the alumni who come through 120, who got 120. But we're going to start with seven that are most notable. Talking about their excellent qualities, what they did, what they gave to us. Not emphasizing on their personal life. Because you can't go to college and run up on your professor and start picking through his personal life. You won't be in that class for long. So we ain't going to do that with the gods, all right? So I'm going to say peace again. It's magnetic. I love you, family. And always remember, you're the greatest nation. The greatest nation. Peace, almighty.